All right, now that I've got my new carbon fiber intake tube finished, let's weigh it up compared to the original aluminum intake tube I had shown in previous videos. The new carbon tube is a little bit shorter, just given I tweaked the intake a little bit, ran it more inward as you saw in the previous video. Well, let's weigh this up. I've got my scale set here to grams. Let's put the aluminum one on. 478 grams and the carbon tube plus the MAF adapter, 162, 163. So that is like two thirds less weight than the aluminum tube. That is incredible. Times two, and that combined weight savings equates to almost one and a half pounds for us American blokes who speak in Imperial and not metric. One and a half pounds on just a couple of intake tubes. That is impressive weight savings. Hi, my name is Dan Dulak and welcome back to my channel where I am building a V10 powered Ultima Evolution convertible. This is episode number 32. If you missed the previous 31 episodes, go be sure to check that out. There's a lot been going on with this build. On this episode, we're gonna dive more into the carbon intake system. In the previous episode, I showed you how I created some custom carbon fiber and 3D printed air boxes. On this episode, I'm actually gonna build the carbon fiber intake runners as well. Three and a half inch tubes that go from the engine throttle body to the intake air boxes. So we're gonna check that out. We're also gonna take a look at some wiring based on, uh, on episode 29 when I was doing some soldering of some heavy battery cables. Got some great recommendations from you guys. So I went back, re-looked at that and fixed that up. So anyway, without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, here's half the air box done. There's the lid. I've got it secured in place. Had to re-drill the holes in the lid, but not a big deal. Now I've got to do the bottom half. So I'm going to make a paper template, get the paper template to fit. I'm going to wrap the sides first, tuck it under to the bottom. Bottom's not going to be seen, so the carbon doesn't have to be perfect on the bottom, but I do want it to look good on the sides. Orient the weave in the same direction if I can make it happen and finish this one off. I'm gonna get to making the bottom half of this next and I think I'm gonna do all three of the remaining pieces, the other lid and the other bottom half to do it all at once. All right, pretty excited how that turned out. Let's finish these off. The second air box lid has been skinned. Just waiting on the fourth coat of epoxy to dry, then I'll sand, cut and polish that up. And similarly, the two air boxes, both driver, passenger side, these are all ready to be cured, sanded, cut and polished. Again, fourth coat on those as well. Now it's time to get these air boxes mounted up. I'm gonna get these on the car. Just to give you a visual, this is just one of the spare 3D printed 45 tubes that I created. And you can see how that's how I'm gonna route the NACA into this. I'll probably have to do something different than this, but that gives you the idea. Slides in the hole, then I'll just glue it in there permanent and that should be good. So let's get these on the car. All right, here's the box. I drilled three holes. I actually 3D printed uh, an angle 
grommet there. And I did the same on the back. You can see there, and then these are rubber washers just to help it isolate from some vibration. take some of this fiberglass four inch 12k braided biaxial sleeve cut this here and then I'm just gonna slide it on here and you can cut this a little bit longer than I need One thing I wanted to mention here about the rubber bands, I use the rubber bands to hold the carbon sleeve onto the PVA tube because it is a little loose, but after the first coat of epoxy goes on and even when the epoxy is almost set, you can basically pull off or clip off those rubber bands and then the carbon sleeve is nicely stuck to the PVA plug inside. And then you of course put on the rest of the coats of epoxy and you're good to go. So. That's a little tidbit for those worried about what I was gonna do about those rubber bands. PVA is the answer for making 
any carbon fiber part. You can use it as a uh, plug or a mold and it works. Well, I guess a plug is the best. You don't, you don't want to use it for a mold, but for a plug, it works perfectly. One of my viewers turned me on to these hose clamps. These are sweet. They're one piece aluminum with a single cap head screw on there and they're sized perfectly for the appropriate tubing that you're looking to, to secure. Phase two motorsports. There's the part number. They're not very expensive either. I think they're like $3 each or something like that. So very cool recommendation. They make this engine bay look super slick and clean. All right, guys, I've got the intake all back together. The carbon fiber intake tubes, runners, as well as the carbon fiber air boxes. So let me show you what I got. Uh, what is going on here? Well, long story short, I had forgotten to take some additional footage of the entire airbox system before I took the engine and trans out. Engine's sitting there, transmission sitting there. There's a story. Notice the headers are missing. No headers on there uh, and X-pipe exhaust. Those are getting sent off to be heat shielded. I got pictures, I got excited and just tore the engine and trans out. So no additional footage here, but I did manage to capture a short clip on my iPhone that I posted to my Instagram account. Let me show you that. And then I'll show you some pictures and we'll take a quick look at what this looked like before I tore it apart. You ready? Here we go. Oh yes. Now that's what I'm talking about. Full carbon intake. All right, guys, you talked me into it. I went and got a, uh, while I was at Harbor Freight, I just picked up one of these hydraulic wire crimpers. Back in episode 29, I did the solder technique on these wires. But again, based on some commentary from a bunch of you guys, I decided to go back and crimp those. There's solder in there as we saw in a few episodes ago, and now they're crimped. So I'll reheat shrink those, but I've got a few to do. We'll get those squared away and that'll be done. Thanks for the tips all, appreciate it.